Hey DIYers and welcome to episode number two in the building a mobile app with a node API series. Today we're going to talk about a couple different things. The biggest thing we're going to do is set up all the routes and then we're going to set up the data models which to be honest is a little boring. The routes is kind of fun because you start talking about exactly how you're going to access this data from your app. There's not going to be a ton because this is going to be a pretty simple app but we're going to go ahead and dive right in so let's go ahead and go to our terminal and we're going to get to the desktop so we're going to do cd desktop and then we're going to get into our tasker app so we're going to cd tasker actually let's just go ahead and open this first so let's do sublime task tasker all right, so now we got that open. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. So we've got controllers, models, and node modules. So this is where we left off last time. We're going to go ahead and chop out a lot of this because most of this was just to kind of show you guys how the overall server works. So we're just going to cut it down to that. Give ourselves a little bit of room here. This is going to go away. So we're going to utilize the router function within Express. So we're going to do var router is equal to express dot, ooh, dot router. And you know what? I think it's capital R. Okay. So now we have our router set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up, because this is an API, we're going to go ahead and set up the API to have the default subdirectory of API. So we're going to do app dot use we're going to do root API router. So what that's going to do is it's going to basically tell the app that, the Express app that, hey, if somebody comes to the API, utilize the router. Okay, so now we have a basic router set up. You know, there's not a whole lot happening, but if you go to API, it's going to look for different routes within that API. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a controller called tasks. Task, we'll call it call it tasks.js. I have a feeling this just kind of off the cuff stuff is going to come back to bite me. And we're going to go ahead and create a matching one for model. So we're going to do task. Did I do tasks.js? Nope. Saving it. Tasks.js. So now we have a controller and a model called tasks.js. So the first thing we're going to do in our controller is we're going to require our model inside our controller. So let's go ahead and do var task is equal to require dot dot. So this is going to look in the models folder and then task dot js. Tasks. Grr. I'm going to regret that I think. I don't think I need the js. Anyway. So now that we have the tasks model required, let's go ahead and create our first actual route. So the first route is going to be a route that we are going to use to get tasks. First we're going to do exports, which basically tells the server that when you require this controller, it, you have access to this function. So we're going to call it get tasks. This function is equal to function. And then we're going to submit the request and the response. And then we're going to close that function. So within this, we're going to just set up a test response here. So we're going to do response is equal to response.send is equal to getting all tasks. I can't, uh, the, the K and the T are jacking me up today. So I'm going to save this. And I believe I should be able to CD tasker. And I should just be able to node. Oh, no, hold on. I need to set up my, I actually need to set up my router in the server. So we're, we need to set up the route to point to that function. So we're going to do router, oops, right the R, router, dot route. And we're going to open it up and we're going to say tasks. So ta if you go to API forward slash tasks, it will take you to a git call, which will point at the task controller which we have not required yet so we're going to do var task controller is equal to require require controllers 
forward slash tasks. So that will bring in the task controller, which will also bring in the model. There's nothing really happened on the model yet, so that doesn't really matter. But what we can do now is we can do task controller. Oop, forgot the R. Task controller dot get tasks. Let's make sure that's all spelled right. It is. So now we should be able to close that off. Now we should be able to node server. Oh, what do we do? We broke it. We broke the dang thing. Cannot find module tasks. Why not? Did I spell? Oh, I forgot the R. <laughs> All right. Node server. And now it is running. Now, remember in the first episode, it spit out a bunch of stuff, but I removed all that fancy stuff. So if nothing happens, if that cursor drops down and nothing happens, that's okay. So let's go ahead and open up our browser. And let's hit localhost 3000. Oops. Now we're going to do API tasks. Getting all tasks. So that route is set up perfectly. So now we have this sending back to the browser like, hey, we got everything you needed. No big deal. So let's go ahead and set up the next route. So we're going to do exports dot get task. So now we're going to do the same thing, function, request, response. And then we're going to do... Dot send getting a single task. So we're going to do another one here, server. So we'll do router dot route task dot get task controller dot get task. <clears throat> So then let's go ahead and set up an exports dot add task is equal to function. A lot of repetition here. I'm trying to get through as quickly as I can. Response dot send. So we're going to send the response adding a task. So then we're going to set that up in the server. Do router dot route add task dot post. So this is different. So this is one we're actually going to be submitting data to this. So this won't be just retrieving data based on some variable you're getting, but you'll actually be submitting data to be saved to a database. So we're going to do post and we're going to say task controller dot add task I think is is that what I called it yep and I spelled it wrong no I didn't all right so then we're gonna set up one more maybe two more task is equal to function again sorry about the repetitiveness I just want to I just want you guys to see how it's you know how this really works so we're gonna do send updating a task Move it and set up another one real quick. Exports dot delete a task is equal to function request response and response dot send deleted the task. All right. So there's our routes. So we're gonna do router dot route dot update task oops task dot update task controller dot update task so what update is going to do is it's going to set you up to submit an update to the database instead of just adding a new field oops i added an extra r there didn't i router dot route delete task delete so this is basically letting the router know that you're this is basically a delete 
controller. It's just good to good to be verbose about what you're doing. So let's do task controller dot delete task. So that's it. Those are the basic routes we're going to set up. The controller set up for the most part of, you know, we're going to go to all those real quick just so you can see kind of how it works. So we're going to go ahead and quit this and then we're going to reboot it. Uh oh, I missed something. What did I do? So I guess I am actually kind of mixing some stuff up here. So this is going to be a post as well, as is this. Uh, hmm, we could probably make this a git. <clears throat> I'm not really sure what I was mixing that up with, but nonetheless, this is definitely the right way to do this. So let's go ahead and do this now. That should be working. So now we should be able to hit all of these routes. So let's go ahead and hit API task. Again, we got that. Task, getting a single task. Oops. And we're going to do add task. Cannot get API add task. What? An add task is gonna, not going to work because it's not a get function. It is actually a post function. So that's the basic premise. Our routes are set up. So now let's go ahead and set up our task model real quick because that'll be a good thing to have moving forward. Again, we're not really going to be doing a whole lot outside of you know just setting up the basic structure here. But I wanted to set up the, the model so you guys can see what a model will look like. So remember when we were installing node modules in the first episode, I installed mongoose. So let's double check the mongoose is there. It is there. So we're going to go ahead and require mongoose. So var mongoose is equal to require mongoose. So basically what we're setting up here, first we're going to initialize or require mongoose. So that's going to allow us to set up a mongoose schema. So that's what the data is going to look like when it's going into and coming out of the, the Mongo database. So let's go ahead and create said schema var task and since this is a model in the schema we're going to capitalize the first letter we're going to do equals mongoose dot uh, schema and then we're going to open open oh and we're going to open open close that bounce down here and so basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up an object for each piece of data that we'll be saving in the Mongo database. Let's start with the task title. So we're going to set the type equal to string. Oh, forgot the comma. Then we're going to set the default equal to an empty string. And then we're going to put required equal to true. And then we're going to move down to the next one. So we're going to say task description. It's going to be type string default equal to nothing. Again, and we're going to do required is equal to true. And we're going to set up, oops, forgot my comma there. We're going to do task Start, date, and then we're going to do type is equal to date, I believe. We're not going to set a default there. Required is equal to true. And then we're going to do the task end date. Type is equal to date. Required equal to true. So I think that's probably all the data we need. Just task title. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have a user ID. So we'll say user ID type is equal to number. Required is equal to true. And we don't want to set a default on it. You know, so by default, the mongoose schema includes an ID. So unless you want the ID to be something outside of the default IDs given by Mongo, then you can just not put ID in there. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to export this module. So model. So we're going to do module dot exports is equal to mongoose 
dot model. We're going to say task. So basically what this does is it sets it up so this task model can be called outside of this scope within this .js file. So when we require it here, we can actually access everything we need about that model to actually start playing with the database based on that data model. So I think that's it for this video. We covered setting up the routes, setting up the model. There's other models that are going to happen like user models, but I want to do that later. The first thing we're going to do in the next video is going to focus on actually taking data and writing it to the database and then pulling out that data that we've added. So that's what the episode number three is going to focus on. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you are liking what you are watching, please make sure to click subscribe or like or, you know, whatever. Follow me on Twitter. I just love hearing that you guys are enjoying these videos and learning stuff. So thanks. Take care, DIYers.